And so there are a few different components, aren't there, to Instagram. There's, there's the... Now, you're going to have to forgive me for not getting the words exactly right. <laughs> I'm learning as we go along as well. Uh, but uh, there's the feed, which are the square mm -hmm. uh, photographs. And then mm -hmm. there are stories. And there's two mm -hmm. types of stories. There's the ones that just evaporate in 24 hours. And then there's the ones that get pinned to the top of your uh, mm -hmm. profile. And then there's IGTV. So can you speak to the strengths and weaknesses or how you would utilize each one of those separately? Definitely. Um, IGTV, we'll start off with. That just product came out about a year ago and it didn't take off as much as they really wanted it to be. They wanted it to be a competitor to YouTube. So people were watching longer form content on Instagram and not going over to YouTube. I still think it's a really amazing opportunity if you have seen people engage with that kind of content. So if you have YouTube video or longer video that you have within your own content library, you could always post on there. It's always good to be highlighted on IGTV, but I think where people are spending most of their time is again in the stories. It's really low friction. You just click, 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 as opposed to watching for two to three minutes. Um, the highlight section is really where you could take some uh, motivational aspects or, or educational content and keep that there always. So when people are coming to your page, they can learn more about what you're doing especially for these real estate deals. Maybe you could talk um, about what you've learned in the field, where you're trying to go, and some of your hopes for why you would want to connect. Then on the grid itself, you know, that's what stays there long term. So really create crafting content that A, aligns with your target audience, and then B, shows off, you know, what your goals are and who you are itself. Because it's not just professional, because people are not coming to Instagram to totally see very professional content. They want to be you know, have a human relationship and have uh, real content. Yeah, that's a big thing, isn't it? That uh, one has to become accustomed to and comfortable with sharing one's day-to-day -day life, right? the kind of things yeah. that normally you might not want anybody <laughs> to see mm -hmm. uh, or not be, you know, unshaven, unkempt, yeah. in suits, right? Yeah, but totally. Kind of your normal stuff. It's, uh, it's mm -hmm. uncommon. And, but this is what you're talking about is desirable on, uh, on Instagram because it creates a relationship uh, with, uh, with one's prospects, for want of a better term. Definitely. And what you always want to be doing, and I do this for myself, it's, you know, who's looking at my stories? Who are these kinds of people who are looking at it? Because you can see the data and who's looking at them. And how do I want to present myself to these kinds of people? So, you know, you want to be authentic, but you don't want to be, you know, on the beach doing keg stands if you're in your 40s and, you know, you have your wife at home and you're at a conference and God knows what. So you always want to be aware of how you're presenting your personal brand because these are all going to shape yourself to creating long-term deals with the people that are looking at your content itself.